Good afternoon and welcome to the Midday News. Here's what we have in the bulletin. Man in police custody in connection with nine-year-old's murder in Hanover. JS technical workers on sick out. And later in sports, Jamaican players arrive for Davis Cup tennis clash. Thank you for joining us. I'm Shamela Pullen. Here are the details. A 42-year-old man has been taken into custody in connection with the gruesome killing of a nine-year-old girl in Hanover last evening. TVJ News understands that the child is well known to the man. The details in this report. Crime scene tape drawn minutes after 8 Wednesday evening in Q District, Lucy, Hanover. It's the shocking discovery of the body of a nine-year-old girl who has now been identified as Nikita Noel. According to reports, Nikita left home minutes after 7 Wednesday morning for school. She was expected to return the latest to 4 p.m. But when it started to get late, with no sign of her, her mother, Norda Edwards, got worried and suspicious. <laughs> So I kind of find that strange. So I come and you know, you know, and start looking at the other man driving and and they answer the rest of the kids and they say yes. Because John I just meet up on my hand and say tomorrow. So I say, you know, something funny, so we come and the house and leave it on the road. Is it join a pass? She said no, nobody is join a pass. I'm kind of find that very suspicious. Nobody is join a pass. So I'm come back up, put on the clothes that was very dirty. The matter was reported to the Hanover police, who then led a search team to the area. So when we come around the police now and showing them the traps where she would travel from to go there. Go back down the road, these people, the driver. Then I hear that a little boy and her come up. So we're coming back up now to speak to the little boy. Then I hear loud screaming. So when you come up here, so the people in the community were screaming when they found her? No matter. So you found the little boy that she was walking with? No. Trust me, I never got to look for the little boy. Because the little boy will be very down there, so... Miss Edwards says her daughter has been using that same route for the past eight years. There is no shortcut. The community is also known to be a safe and peaceful area. When she goes to school, straight to home. When you drive the bar off, she goes straight to home. So I kind of find it funny. I'm going to time, catch up after five days, and I'm going to say, oh, something right. And then I start feeling very bad. I'm going to pee something right. You felt it somehow, you knew something was wrong. Even when in the police station, I said to the police station, I need to go because I need to find my daughter. Community members say Nikita will be missed. Right now, boy, no shock, sir. Right. Sir, no shock. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You're coming to no shock. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No boy, no look for this. Boy, no no look for this. What, what type of child? Oh, it's, a, it's a little young girl. A little young girl. A man has everything, you know? No do no boy, no. Meanwhile, the police say the 42-year-old man they now have in custody was picked up hours after Nikita's body was found. It's believed the man is well known to the child and that the child knew him very well too. Scores of technical workers at the Jamaica Information Service, JS, are now on sick out. The Jamaica Civil Service Association says it's a situation it is monitoring closely. Kimon Witter reports. The audiovisual workers attached to the Kingston and Montego Bay offices of the JIS are reportedly upset over what has been proposed as it relates to the alignment under the ongoing restructuring of the public sector. President of the Jamaica Civil Service Association, O'Neill Grant, says the workers are asking for the union's intervention in the discussions to represent their interests. The JCSA has received reports that staff um, the audiovisual um, unit at the JIS have taken industrial action. 
Um, we are trying to verify the extent of it. The indicators are that they are not satisfied with what has been proposed in relation to their alignment. And they are also asking that the union be brought into the discussions now so that their interests can be represented. They don't think. He says the workers don't believe the management is properly advocating for the staff. And that they would want the union to be at the table for these discussions at this time and not to be brought in after. So those are the general concerns. and um, We are trying to monitor things as they are unfolding. But this is not an action that was driven out of the, the interactions with the JCC and the, the Ministry of Finance and the TIU. This is coming out of what we understand to be the internal consultations between the management and the staff and their displeasure with what has been reported to them as the proposal for the alignment. Mr. Grant says it's important that the union be allowed to participate in the dialogue so that the workers' interests can be properly represented. We are urging the Ministry of Finance to allow the union to come to the table now rather than after because the level of assurance is that we need to give to the workers that the matters are being addressed and addressed expeditiously needs to be given. And from where we are now, it is only the union that can give that assurance. So we are asking if we can do be brought to the table rather than after the discussion between the management and the, and the Ministry of Finance has ended. Kimon with a reporting for TVJ News. The once peaceful tourist area of Treasure Beach in St. Elizabeth is now facing a major challenge. Thieves are now targeting business operators and residents. Prince Moore reports. The St. Elizabeth police are being called on to do more to protect business operators and residents in Treasure Beach. The residents say since the start of the year, there has been an increase in the number of robberies and break-ins in the area. Up to January 28, some eight robberies have taken place in the popular tourist destination in the parish. The residents and business operators are now raising concern. It's terrible, man. It's terrible. We can't continue like this. We don't can't feel good about this for our going in our village. We never used to do nice things. So now like something could done about it. We never used to lock windows and door and nothing down here. So we grew up as a bit by a bit the thing has changed. I would want it to change <laughs> so drastic that you know you have to have people and a watch and a hide and a you know. We can't continue like this, it has to change. And if we continue like this, then we think that we're going to go through the problem. Big, big problem. In the meantime, the residents are calling for tourism stakeholders in Treasure Beach to conduct background checks on their employees. This, they believe, will identify a history or tendency for antisocial behavior. I don't say nothing wrong with um, you make a little background check to find out who is who. You know, if I'm a year check, they can't tell us I live next door or such and such. And if they check somebody else and they live somewhere else, at least you got an idea of what's going on. You understand? I don't say harass because the whole way come from Jamaica. We are the whole way Jamaica. But at least, in this day and age, everybody has moved around. A little identification would make things much better and much safer. Increased police presence is also being requested. I think their presence will be more, more often, will be more nicer, more than when they present or when you call it. So it would be nice to see them walking through the area just like, you know, yeah. We could have taken a little bit of that way. But that's another issue. People scare of police, just like the, the man who are Because you're up in the mouth, so every person who calls him, the police are going to talk to him. So people afraid of them. Over the whole island, they're not just alone. They are hoping that, with the help of the various stakeholders in Treasure Beach, there will be a hold on the rampant robberies, so that it will not lead to greater acts of criminality, such as murders. Prince Moore, TVJ News. Members of the security forces are seeking divine intervention for the recent surge in crime in Manchester. This comes days after a curfew was imposed in parts of the parish to curb violence. More in this report. 
Head of Manchester Police Superintendent Shane McCullough is urging citizens to go back to basics on their knees in prayer as part of the push to curtail crime. The call follows an increase in major crimes including murders in the usually safe parish of Manchester for 2022. And since the start of 2023, South Central Manchester continues to be rocked by crime, having recorded a 150% increase in murders up to January 22. It is not a time for us to pray to raise our hands that the Lord has given us and put it up in the fight against evil. evil. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing or no better way to describe evil but say that it is evil. And it comes from the hell and the lines of the devil, Satan. And the only way to break that is with the blood of Jesus. Additionally, Constable Faulkner says it is time for citizens to start reporting to the police people who they know are involved in criminal activities. In order to reclaim Manchester, we have to be quick to give up some people and some things. Amen? Yes, sir. We have to be quick to give up some things and some people. We've got to be quick to give up some high old spot. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. Some of us, we know about some high old spots. But because we are keeping our eyes closed as though we don't see them, we don't see when the stolen goods are going into certain houses, we don't see when the criminals, after they would have done some wrongs in other places, are marching to, into some houses. If we, if we continue to close our eyes, then Manchester will never be able to be reclaimed. Our territory will still be plundered by the evil forces. Mr. Faulkner says with God at the center, Manchester will be reclaimed as the safe parish it once was. If you have those guys out there that call themselves scammers and they have a rather ID to say that they are farmers, you can be a farmer too. They are doing telefarming and you do infarming. <laughs> See for Manchester. It is time that we begin to reclaim and re-establish with the right terms, the police and the citizens working together. Cody and Barrett, TBJ News. Fire destroyed a five-bedroom house in Albion St. Thomas on Wednesday. According to reports, fire was seen coming from the house minutes after 1 p.m. Residents raised an alarm as they tried to put out the blaze. Well, as we go upstairs, the fire get to us. The heat, we have to get back. We can't get upstairs, we get out nothing, right? It's just like that. We couldn't get to it. Hell of a disaster, man. They were unable to save anything from the house. Everybody start cry out and try to get around and get to the fire, but the fire, more than us. One truck was wrong, but they call another truck and two truck come in and begin to out the fire and everybody start help, but we couldn't um, get to it. It took more than us, right? a hell of a fire, man. It's, we're not to get to it. So the fire, the truck come in and start to cool down and you understand? It's, it's a horrible look, man. So what you the situation here is of such that we have lost this building to the fire. We have two units on location. However, we have lost the fire, we have lost the building to fire because of wind direction at the time. Wind direction changes and the fire engages this building. A former General Secretary of the People's National Party is raising concerns about road works in southern Manchester. Wenworth, Wenworth Skeffer says he welcomed the planned road work, but he wants to know the other plans for the constituency under the road rehabilitation program. Let me ensure that this is not just a mere symbolism or a PR stunt or an idle promise and that whatever expenditure is to be done is actually done to deal with these bad roads that are in the constituency right across all four divisions. I also want to ensure that whatever expenditure 
is done is done in an efficient way with a clear level of transparency and accountability. Scaffer is also asking for a timeline for when the work will commence and when it's expected to be completed. I also want to ensure that the selection of the contractor or contractors is done in accordance with the government procurement guidelines and we have absolute transparency and accountability and openness in that aspect of the selection of contractors and we don't merely select contractors that will just put money in their pockets for because of political opportunists or just to party supporters. And now a look into the financial world. Here's Good and Bart with the Business Minute. Bank of Jamaica's Major Karen Burrell officially went on secondment to the Financial Services Commission, FSC, as Executive Director, effective Wednesday, February 1. The secondment of Major Burrell follows the resignation of Everton McFarlane as FSC Executive Director, effective January 31, 2023. Major Burrell has been Chief Prudential Officer at the Central Bank since August 2022. In business overseas, India's Adani Enterprises has called off its share sale after the share price plunged on Wednesday. The Adani Group's flagship company confirmed the $2.5 billion raised from the sale will be returned to investors after shares fell 26%. The group's companies have seen more than $90 billion wiped off their value since a U.S. investment firm made fraud claims. Adani denies the allegations. That's it for the Business Minute. I'm Cody Ann Barrett. And now the top regional and international stories. In the region, there's a call for small island developing states to develop strategies to effectively deal with transnational crime and criminal organizations. It comes out of a conference jointly hosted by the Barbados Defense Force and the United Kingdom Armed Forces. Barbados Home Affairs Minister Wilfred Abrahams says while globalization has strengthened the interconnectivity of the Caribbean, it has also created avenues for criminal networks in the region to thrive. However, Mr. Abraham says the sustainable solution to these challenges must be deeply rooted in regional cooperation and support from international partners. On the international scene, the United States is imposing visa restrictions on Taliban members involved in the repression of women and girls in Afghanistan. The visa restrictions apply to some current and former Taliban members, non-state security group members and others. This announcement comes more than a month after the Taliban announced that it was banning women from attending universities and working with non-governmental organizations. And those were the top regional and international stories. I'm Sandy Williams. We head to a quick break. When we come back, Karen Maddo will have your midday sports report.